Today we're talking about where 3D printing actually adds value and where it doesn't. This is a huge topic. It's a thing everyone in the additive industry talks about all the time. So this is a quick overview. We're not gonna to get to all the details. That's something we'll explore as time goes on. But to begin to explore this, we have with us Rob LaRue, who's a senior technical marketing manager at Carbon. Rob, great to have you with us. Hey, John, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, this is a very common question. And fortunately, 3D printing can add tremendous value the way that any fabrication technology does through a combination of better parts and better process. Um, the typical domain of 3D printing is in rapid prototyping. Product teams want to be able to iterate quickly and 3D printers get you parts in hours versus days. Uh, traditionally, this has been for fit and form prototyping, though with better, better materials, 3D printers are more relevant in functional prototyping too. Uh, low volume production is also surging for 3D printing because of those advances in materials. Low volume can be anywhere from tens to tens of thousands of parts. Uh, companies like Carbon can offer that necessary combination of material properties, surface finish, and predictable, consistent production. Uh, the process can be far more cost effective than molding or milling in low volume. Uh, and then with the right materials and with a consistent, reliable production process, product teams can also introduce new levels of performance uh, with complex part geometries like lattices that you simply couldn't produce with a mold or with a mill. Um, similarly, 3D printing serves as a catalyst for accelerated product development. Companies saving months worth of project time beyond just prototyping by designing and producing parts on the same machine. They eliminate tooling lead time and validation of new tools. Now, Rob, before you get into the ways that 3D printing doesn't add value, I wanna just highlight something that you mentioned a couple of times, which is materials. So a lot of people who are familiar with 3D printing think about it as a tool for sort of form and fit prototyping, where you're just testing out the shape of something and then when it comes time to test mechanical characteristics or real world performance, you switch to a different process to get your prototypes. But the materials have advanced enough in the last few years that you can really get uh, you know, functional prototypes and actual end use parts out of 3D printing. Yeah, that's right. It's, it really comes down to being able to just make great parts, make real parts, parts that you would put on products to customers, things that you would feel proud to actually sell to them. Um, and it's that combination of better mechanical properties, better, you know, uh, just other material properties. It could be around biocompatibility, could be around chemical compatibility, um, combined with a surface finish and getting those textures that are going to look great and make your product shine. So let's switch gears now and talk about the ways that 3D printing doesn't add value, because these are almost as uh, widely misunderstood as some of the ways that it does. Yeah, established production techniques really earned that position over time because they proved that they were good for that job and they were honed for that particular job. And 3D printing doesn't change those as much as it expands the tools available to product teams. Uh, for example, if you're gonna make a low value part that has relatively low complexity, but at an extremely high volume, that's perfect for injection molding. For example, packaging, or we always use the example of a standard bottle cap that needs to cost a penny, but you need two billion of them every year. That's ideal for injection molding. Similarly, if you need a high value part that's got a relatively high level of complexity and a high level of precision uh, in an existing thermoplastic, if you know that you need it in a very common thermoplastic, that's really the domain of milling, especially if you only need that one to 10 parts. Um, milling is great at extremely low volume production and in certain circumstances it can be great for high volume parts uh, like laptops or smartphone cases where you can get some some really precise geometries out of it. Thanks Rob. This is something we're going to keep on exploring on this series because it's a huge topic and there are a lot of questions around it and with recent advances in 3D printing the lines between you know where additive adds value and where it doesn't have been shifting so this is something we'll keep exploring. Rob LaRue, Senior Technical Product Marketing Manager at Carbon. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, John. To learn more about Carbon and those dual cure materials that can get you great functional prototypes and low volume production, visit us at carbon3d.com or subscribe to us on YouTube.